Back in 2015, Dave Abrahams gave a talk at Apple's annual developer conference, WWDC, that blew everyone's mind. In fact, he was so confident it would blow everyone's minds that he listed his role at Apple in the title screen as Professor of Blowing Your Mind. What was the talk about? And are you ready for your mind to be blown? In this video, we're going to look at protocols. We're also going to talk about two different styles of programming. One I'm sure you're familiar with, object-oriented programming, and the other you may not be, it's called protocol-oriented programming. Protocol-oriented programming can be difficult to get your head around when you first encounter it, but it is an interesting approach to be aware of and have available in your arsenal. So first, what's a protocol? A protocol is like a list of methods and properties that have related functionality. You might know a similar concept in other languages called interfaces. Types such as classes can then adopt a protocol and implement this list of methods and properties. For example, let's refactor the telephone class as a protocol. Pretty simple, you would just replace the keyword class with protocol and then remove any body of the methods left just with the function definitions. Now let's refactor the landline class to adopt this telephone protocol. It actually uses the same syntax as subclassing, specifying the protocol it adopts after the class name and a colon. Now, as the telephone protocol doesn't actually contain any implementation, the landline class needs to provide this implementation now. Properties in a protocol just show whether they're both gettable and settable, or just gettable. Let's add a phone number property to telephone to see how this works. Now in the landline class that adopts the protocol, we'll need to implement this new property and initialize it. So that's the basics with protocols, but there's an exciting feature of protocols that I haven't mentioned yet. Protocol extensions. After setting up a protocol, you can extend a protocol to add actual functionality to the protocol. This will make more sense if we take a look at the telephone example again. After defining the telephone protocol, use the keyword extension to extend it and add implementation to the methods in the protocol. Now we don't even need any implementation in the landline class or any type that adopts the telephone protocol. One rule to be aware of though, even with extensions, protocols still can't store properties. However, as computed properties don't actually store anything, you can add computed properties in protocol extensions. These protocol extensions make protocols so much more powerful and a real alternative to inheritance for injecting functionality into a type. Protocols make it possible to structure some different and complex relationships between types for a few reasons. First, protocols can inherit protocols. In our telephone example, we could turn the landline and the cellular classes into protocols that inherit from the telephone protocol. In the case of the cellular class, we'll need to extend the protocol to implement the send SMS method. Secondly, and this is huge, types can adopt more than one protocol. So let's go back to our example. The yellow boxes represent concrete types, whereas the white boxes are now protocols. So smartphones, for example, in addition to adopting the cellular protocol, could also adopt a GPS protocol, a fingerprint reader protocol, etc. We could also set up protocols that manage the functionality of different input techniques. We could have a rotaryable protocol for dealing with rotary input a push buttonable protocol for dealing with push buttons and a touchable protocol for dealing with touch screens. Now when we set up a push button phone class, it could adopt both the landline and push buttonable protocols. Over on the cellular side, the non-smart class could adopt both the cellular protocol and the push buttonable protocol. No longer would we have to make difficult decisions about inheritance or have to write code for dealing with push buttons more than once and end up with redundant code. It's all managed by the one protocol. In code, it's pretty straightforward to adopt multiple protocols. You just add any additional protocols to the class definition separated with commas. 
The third reason protocols can introduce more complex relationships between types is that protocols can represent all types of relationships. Inheritance usually places an emphasis on an is a relationship. For example, a cellular is a telephone. Protocols can introduce other types of relationships, such as capabilities or a can-do type of relationship. For convention, we generally suffix these sorts of relationships with an abul or ing. We saw these sorts of can-do relationships with the input type in our example, rotary abul, push-button abul, and touch abul. As you can see, protocols can be pretty interesting. You can, of course, continue programming with inheritance and it can still make sense in many situations. But if you want to fully explore the possibilities in Swift, it's worth considering protocols in many cases as an alternative to inheritance. This has been a sample from my video course, iOS Development with Swift. I've also written a book on iOS development. I'm hoping to upload a sample video like this regularly. So if you're interested in iOS development and would like to see more videos like these, you might want to click below to subscribe. Bye.